Sean. Good morning, y'all. Happy day 32, and welcome to Mental Health Week, by the way. This is supposed to be our first dress-down day, so I am in my, my hoodie today, and I hope you guys are able to stay comfy um, today, comfy and cozy and warm today as well as we work. Um, one thing that we would note here, our objective for the rest of this week is to be able to analyze creative works. This all has to do with our analysis essay, our last major writing project of the semester. Uh, once again, as it is whenever we start a new essay, I don't want you to freak out. This is one that we've got lots of, of time to wiggle with here. Um, one thing I would point out, since we're not entirely certain what, what school is going to look like after Thanksgiving, is that this is one that we can stretch to the end of the semester if needed. Ideally, I would like to be able to get this graded back to you so that you have time to revise by the end of the semester, but we'll see what happens with that. Along with that, you'll notice that there is no additional graded work or no additional graded assignments this week as well, including journals. Part of that is um, to, as a way to celebrate Mental Health Week a little bit here. It builds in a little more catch-up time for us on things like past missing work and those kinds of things. It also allows me to make sure that I have as much in and graded um, before I send grade reports as possible. So while there is some lesson video for you to watch this week, just to get started with your thinking process for the analysis essay, that still builds in some time for you to catch up on other graded assignments too. After Thanksgiving, the idea is that we can dive back into grammar, make sure that we can review for the final test, um, and then we can wrap up any writing projects we have as well, including revising old essays. You'll notice there is another lesson video after this one where we analyze a story called Act of a Hero. That's just so I can give you some ideas on how to analyze a short story. In our next lesson, I'll show you how to do the same for poetry, songs, and artwork, because those all follow similar lines of thinking as well. I want to make sure you have what you need for analyzing your uh, a text that you choose. Um, you do have until Thanksgiving break to decide what text you're going to analyze in your own essay, whether it's a poem, a song, a piece of physical artwork, or visual art, I should say, or a short story. That's up to you. But let's pray and, um, before we look at this prompt. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for, um, thank you for the, the wisdom um, of our leaders. I know it's a difficult choice to um, just shut our school for a little bit for the sake of, of health and preventing um, diseases from spreading. We pray, God, that you are watching over all of us, protecting us with safety and health. As we, um, as we think about after Thanksgiving and returning then, and also as we think about next semester um, and next year, um, how do we um, just continue to, how do we continue to, to manage this pandemic that we're in without selling out um, what we hope to do in the future too? We do pray, God, that you're keeping our families and friends safe. We pray that you're um, preparing us to have a great Thanksgiving um, next week. We do pray that we can remember how good you are, even in the midst of a very, very bad world sometimes. We love you, Jesus. We pray this all in your name. Amen. So let's talk about this essay. I'm going to go back out to day 32. One thing I would point out as well, if you are just way, way, way behind in writing workshop right now, take your time um, on, on these materials right here. Um, by all means, prioritize things like missing work, persuasive essays, college essay revisions, and then dive back into this whenever you're ready. But I do want to make sure that, that um, we can at least get started on this essay process before we fall too far behind. We're going to look at analysis essay prompt overview here. And notice that I've given you well, a downloadable copy of the prompt right here, or you can just click view. I'll hit view. We have our creative analysis prompt a spot where you can write your thesis if needed. Um, we'll talk about the rubric in a moment. And then we also have space to write your um, outline as well. Um, I'll be giving you this outline as an actual assignment later on. Again, no, no rush to do it right now. But I'll, I'll probably hand that out to you next week so you can start thinking about that over Thanksgiving break too. In any case, let's look at this prompt together and we'll look at how I'm grading this essay too. This is our last major writing project of the semester. Analysis is its own special type of persuasive writing. So, so far this semester, you've actually written persuasively in a couple of ways. College application essay is an expository essay that's supposed to show you off a little bit. So it's persuasive in the sense that you're trying to convince a college to, to admit you, to accept you. Persuasive research is persuasive in the sense that you're actually trying to convince your readers of an argument. Analysis is similar to persuasive research. So like persuasive research, it seeks to convince an audience not of a specific argument, but of a specific interpretation. Unlike persuasive research, analysis focuses on themes and meanings in creative works instead of in nonfiction and research, right? 
Persuasive research makes arguments such as assault rifles are dangerous and should be banned, and then it uses nonfiction, uses articles, uses statistics to prove that point. Literary analysis or creative analysis is more is more like this story. I'll use Frozen as an example for this one. Frozen is about how true love doesn't necessarily have to be romantic, as it's Elsa and Anna's sisterly love that ends up saving the day, right? Is it persuasive? Sure. I'm trying to convince my, my readers of a specific interpretation, right? Someone else could say that Frozen is not about love at all, that Frozen is about bravery or about independence. It is about independence, actually, focusing on, on Elsa's standpoint. It's about arguing interpretations and meanings in creative works. Instead of quoting and commenting from research, the writer of a literary analysis quotes from the creative work itself and explains it in his or her own words. So there's a little more room for your own voice in this essay as well, in your commentary. For a short story, poem, song, or artwork, that one's a little bit different if, if I have any uh, visual artists or fine artists in, in our class, of your choice, analyze its theme, its meaning, in a one and a half to three page essay. One and a half to three pages is rather short right there. So for one and a half, I would say if you're gonna go that short, it needs to be pretty darn well written and pretty darn convincing. Don't go above three on this one. If you choose a short story, you'll want to aim for one that's two full pages or longer. The term short story technically covers anything from a half a page to 50 pages in length. Don't go reading a 50 page short story for this essay. The one that we'll be looking at um, later on today as an example is about five pages long, four to five pages. If you are doing a poem or a song, um, be sure to analyze at least 14 lines. Um, this can be one piece, so obviously like a sonnet, for instance, is a 14 line poem, so that counts. Most songs are going to be 14 lines anyway, but I would be careful of any songs that are really, really repetitive. So let's say you find a song that's like, let's say you do find a, a, a song that's 24 lines long, but of those 24 lines, like 16 of them is, is repeated choruses. That might not be the best idea. It just depends. It could also be multiples by the same artist. So let's say you find a poet that you really like who writes a lot of haikus. Haikus are three lines long, right? If you're gonna, uh, if you do want to analyze those haikus, maybe choose five of them by the same artist and compare between those five. Um, those are all fine by me. I didn't uh, look at artwork right there. Artwork doesn't. There's not a whole lot of limitations on artwork. The one thing I would I would say is be really really careful with selection right there. You want to make sure that the art piece that you're that you're analyzing has enough going on in it to give you enough grounds for analysis. Your essay can be three to five paragraphs, just depends on how you split up the body. And we'll look at the outline in a moment right here. But I'm not necessarily looking for a set number of paragraphs on this essay. If you want to write a traditional five paragraph essay, be my guest. Uh, you could do two body paragraphs, you could just do one big body paragraph. Um, that's really up to you. As far as formatting goes, same thing as always, MLA heading, uh, title, in-text citations for citing page numbers and line numbers. You don't really need in-text citations if you're, if you're analyzing artwork. One inch margins, 12 point times new Roman font, double spaced, we know that stuff. A couple of due dates that I put your way. Again, these could shift, especially if, um, especially if we're still virtual after Thanksgiving break. But it says, uh, by the end of the 24th, I would like for you to select the, cre the creative work that you will be analyzing, that'll be next week's journal entry, is just telling me which creative work you want to analyze. Again, a short story, a poem, a song, or a piece of art. Your outline will be due um, after Thanksgiving break. Um, I will give the 30th as a full outlining day in class as well. Final draft, as for now, is due a week later on the 7th. So I'll give you a drafting week after outlines are due. Again, that may or may not shift. I mentioned thesis statements a moment ago. Just want to give you an idea on what a thesis statement might look like for an analysis essay. For each of these thesis statements, I've indicated kind of the route that I took in analyzing the poem's theme, or the, the text theme. I'll also indicate how I might tackle body paragraphs if I were actually writing uh, an essay about these four texts here, too. Start off with a poem. In Sonnet 130, famous one by William Shakespeare, William Shakespeare uses end rhyme and a set poetic structure to explain that his wife is beautiful in her own unique way. The route that I'm taking with this particular um, essay thesis right here is how does poetry structure affect theme? Now, in Sonnet 130, there's a lot more that I could analyze. What I've chosen here is just to identify a couple of ways, a couple of methods, a couple of techniques William Shakespeare uses in order to develop that theme. If I wanted to make my essay longer, I could analyze more than two um, things that he uses, but for the sake of, of the size of this essay, I chose two. 
One of them is end rhyme. I would probably choose to write one of my body paragraphs about end rhyme. I'm going to use specific lines from Sonnet 130 as my evidence. Then in my commentary, I'll explain how that end rhyme works to, to explain that theme. The theme of this poem is that his wife is beautiful in a unique way. My second body paragraph, I would look at poetic structure. Sonnets are 14 line poems. There's always a dramatic shift somewhere around line 8, 9, or 10. Um, in Shakespeare's sonnets, he always ends with rhyming couplets. So I'll look at how he divides up his stanzas, especially how he divides up the lines um, and the portions, the sections of his poem in order to, to show that theme as well. So that would probably be a four paragraph essay, an introduction to set up, to give background about this, this poem itself, two body paragraphs, one on end rhyme, one on, on poetic structure. All of that is to prove the thesis, which is that the meaning of this poem is his wife's unique beauty. I'll use the conclusion to tie that all together too. Let's talk about a, um, a short story, Gift of the Magi. I'm sure some of you read this in English one, especially if you had Mrs. Schley, because she loves this story. In Gift of the Magi, the author O. Henry frames his ironic ending positively. By creating such a mood in the end, he argues that there is no shame in learning. In this one, we're looking at how tone and mood affect theme. As I'll show you in a little bit here, there are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of different ways to, um, to look at literary devices for analysis. In this one, I chose tone and mood. Now, notice that I structured this thesis a bit differently. This one's two sentences as opposed to one. If we compare that to the first one right here. One thing that we would note here is that we have a theme, that there's no shame in learning, that I would argue that that's the theme of Gift of the Magi. But we note here that O. Henry frames his ironic ending positively. By creating such a mood in the end, he argues that there's no shame in learning. This one I might do as just one big body paragraph. I might uh, take this chronologically through the story. So let's kind of start with a little bit of summarizing in my body paragraph. Talk especially about the ending. There's, there's some irony at the end right there. And then I'll discuss how that creates mood in this story, this positive mood that develops that theme. I suppose I could do that as two, as two body paragraphs. One body paragraph about how the ending is ironic, then another one about mood in general, but that's really up to me later on. Let's talk about a song, Grenade by Bruno Mars. Wonderful song, one of, one of Pastor Dean's favorites too. The theme of Bruno Mars' Grenade is that love drives people to make great sacrifices. Notice on this one, I flip the order. I discuss theme first and then technique later. And these ones I use technique first and then theme later. He uses diction and hyperbole to emphasize these sacrifices. In this one, it's the idea of how figurative language affects theme. As you'll see in a bit, figurative language is everything from symbolism to hyperbole to imagery to diction, similes, metaphors, personification. There's lots and lots and lots of, of ways to look at figurative language, and there's a lot of it in Grenade. Once again, I might do this as, as two body paragraphs as well. One on the diction of the of the song itself, so I'll look at, at Bruno Mars' intentional word choice. And hyperbole is another one, right? Hyperbole is epic exaggeration, right? I'd catch a grenade for you, I would die for you, is hyperbole. And artwork as well, the scream, I'll pull this one up real quick here. Just so you know what we're looking at here. Here we go, The Scream by Edvard Munch. Famous, famous, famous painting right here. Let me go back to here. Edvard Munch heavily contrasts colors and brush strokes in The Scream to capture the experience of an anxiety attack. So if you're analyzing an art piece, you're probably gonna focus on how the artistry itself, how the artist's techniques affect that theme. In this case, I'm looking at two once again, colors and brush strokes. If we look at The Scream once again, notice the contrast in color. You've got these very plain browns going on here, mixed in with very vibrant reds and blues on the top half of the painting. It's actually kind of split in half down the, or diagonally down the middle. Um, so there's a contrast between plain, bland colors, earth, earthy tones, and vibrant, bright colors. There's also a contrast in brush strokes. Notice the very linear brush strokes. Notice the lines in the second half. And notice the, notice the more wavy, loose strokes, flowy strokes on the top half right there. You also have the, the focal point, the figure, who kind of shows both um, as well. Dull colored, or bland colors, earth tones, but also those wavy brush strokes as well. It's kind of in limbo between the two. The theme is that Edvard Munch is trying to capture what an anxiety attack is like, and by contrasting colors and brush strokes, he's able to do that. I might frame this, again, as two body paragraphs. One in which we analyze the, the choice of colors, or contrast in colors, Another one that analyzes the contrast and brush strokes as well.
once again, the idea there, and probably if you're analyzing an art piece anyway, your focus is going to be on art, on artistry, on artistic technique. I should note that that's also a good route to go if you're analyzing music as well. So one thing that makes music diff or songs different from poems, for instance, is that in songs you have things like instrumentation, you have things like vocal pitch, vocal tone, vocal clarity. You could absolutely use that as a route for analysis too. We'll actually see that. Um, we'll actually see that in one of the songs that that I'll show you an analysis for in our next lesson. Notice that none of my thesis statements lended themselves well for three body paragraphs. What I would say, if you wanted to do three smaller body paragraphs, is come up with three different literary devices to analyze. So let's say you're analyzing a song and you notice the song has, I'm just gonna use some examples here. Let's say the song you're looking at has diction, just like, just like, um, like Renate, you wanna look at word choice in the song. Let's say it has symbolism. We'll choose symbolism as another body paragraph. And you still want to discuss instrumentation. You could maybe do that as three body paragraphs. Again, there's a spot to include your thesis right here. You won't be able to do that until you select your text. Um, I will give you until Thanksgiving break to, to do a little bit of research to find what text you want to do, whether it's an art piece, whether it's a song, a poem, a short story. That's up to you. If you're not sure about what text to select, reach out to me. I might be able to give you some suggestions. The way I'm grading your full essay, this this one heavily lends itself towards grammar, since I've got no new grammar to teach you, so I really want to make sure this is a nice polished essay. Um, I am looking for your thesis, so I want to make sure that your thesis is arguable. Does it, does it give a valid interpretation for your text? Does it relate to meaning and theme? Length and structure requirements, that's more or less, is your essay long enough, and does it, um, can, does it include an introduction and conclusion? The rest is, is really on body. So evidence from the creative source supports your thesis. Do you actually use quotes and paraphrases from your text? Or do you refer to the, the art piece if you're doing artwork? Commentary connects evidence to thesis. So do you, do you do a good job of explaining how that evidence develops the theme or demonstrates the meaning of, um, of your text? And then really the rest is grammar from there. Minimal sentence structure errors. I'm looking for no um, run-on sentences, kind of splices, fragments in this one. I'm grading that out of 20 instead of out of 10. Uh, minimal spelling and usage errors. Again, 20 instead of grading out of 10. So I want to make sure this is a nice polished essay. Is your essay well formatted? MLA heading? Does it have a title? Correct font and spacing? Is all of your evidence cited properly? And then lastly, does your essay follow the writing process? Does this show clear evidence of planning, of drafting, of editing, and of publishing at the end? Notice that there is space to write your full outline here as well. Again, I'll, I'll assign this probably later on. No, no big rush to do this now. Obviously, you can start if you like. The only, the only strange thing about this outline right here is that for the body, I just gave you one, uh, one section to include four pieces of evidence. You can divide up body paragraphs, again, at your choosing. Let's say I find four pieces of evidence and two of them work really well for one of my body paragraphs and two of them work well for another body paragraph. I'll split them that way. Maybe you just want one bigger body paragraph. Maybe you want three smaller body paragraphs. Either way is fine by me. Then there's space for a conclusion at the end. So once again, this week is just a time for you to start thinking about what, what sort of text you'd like to analyze. I will give a demonstration of at least one of each of these as well. So we'll do a short story today. Um, actually, several examples of poems, songs, and artwork in our next lesson.